my dear brothers and sisters today i would like to speak to you the seven ways god guides us the seven ways through which god is guiding you and me so it is very important for us to be aware of the ways of the god's guidance god is guiding us each day through different ways so let us see one by one these seven areas seven ways god guides us the first thing god guides us through the word of god when you read the word of god when you go on reading the word of god and understand new new inspirations will be given to you you will be convicted in certain areas and you will come to know these are the things which i am allowed to do these are the things which i am not allowed to do these are the things i have to get rid of so all these informations will be given to you when you read the word of god listen to the word of god and interpretations we read matthew chapter 4 verse 4 god says it is written one does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of god a human being has to live not only by the bread that you eat for our body but by every word that we, that comes from the mouth of god so that is very important so that through the word of god so we should have a connection with the word of god we should read bible we should listen to the preachings because through all these god is guiding us many times i have seen people say father i never knew this i never knew this is wrong i never knew that this is right i never knew this is how i have to live because you never read the word of god you never listen to the word of god you have no time for god so that therefore we have no excuse to tell in front of god therefore make sure that start reading word of god god will guide you psalm 119 was 9 onwards we read like this how can young people keep their way pure by guarding it according to your word by guarding it according to your word we can keep our way pure verse 10 with my whole heart i seek you do not let me stray from your commandments verse 11 i treasure your word in my heart so that i may not sin against you i treasure your word in my heart so that i may not sin against you so the first way god guides us is through the word of god the second way god is guiding us through other people through other people means through the very good advices of your spiritual father your parents you are confessors your friends your best friend sometimes even animals even animals guides us speaks to us we read in the bible there was a time numbers chapter 22 was 28 let us read this then the lord opened the mouth of the donkey and it said to balam what have i done to you that you have struck me these three times so balam was corrected through a donkey donkey was blocking him from going forward because the lord told donkey not to go there was an angel standing in front of him so balam didn't know this and therefore the donkey opened his mouth and corrected so sometimes these even animals correct animals correct or animals even uh, gives us message of the lord through animals we get informations we get the correction and connections praise the lord so through good advices the second way of way of guidance from the holy spirit is through unexpected corners you get some information for example when the judges were com- uh, convicting susanna in the book of daniel then suddenly one boy raised the hands and said i have no part in this sin daniel spoke a small boy he spoke against the judges and corrected them so god can speak to you through small boys small children and small uh, un- insignificant people one day naman a soldier uh, the the chief commander of commander in chief of the army who wanted to get healing from the israeli prophets and then prophet told them go and take bath in the river jordan then naman got angry and then suddenly one of the servants told him 
Why don't you listen? Why don't you listen and go and take bath seven times? Then suddenly Naaman listened and Naaman went and took bath. And my dear brothers and sisters, God can speak through even ordinary servants. Don't think that message of God will come through only those who are taken doctorate in theology or philosophy or maybe the high officials. The Holy Spirit can speak to you through ordinary people, even through servants and children. So be open to the message of the Lord. Always remember, God can speak through anybody. So be tuned to these voices that you hear. So guidance can come. Sometimes we think only through this person God will speak to me. Then you are binding the message of God. Be open. God can speak through, to you through anyone. Maybe on the road when you go, suddenly the taxi driver may give you a message. And give you, uh, give you something which God wants to speak to you. So therefore, be open to the message of the Lord. God can give you guidance through anybody. Sometimes God can guide you through the wrong people. Wrong people. So, uh, and we may, think, we may think, who is he to correct me? He himself is in sin. So who is he to correct me or tell me the truth? So remember, God can speak to you through anybody. So, uh, this is the second way God guides us. The third way God guides us is through prayer. Anytime when you take a decision, when you want to take a decision, spend time in prayer. When you spend time in prayer, God will send people. God will give you strong inspiration. When Paul was in prayer, God sent Barnabas to invite and help him. And Barnabas, when he was in prayer, God spoke to him about Paul. When Peter was in prayer, God spoke about everything is clean. You know, gave a message so everyone who is in prayer will be guided. Jesus was in prayer. After the prayer, he took the decisions. He, the whole night he spent in time in prayer. Then he came and dis took, selected the 12 disciples. So the whole night in prayer, then he went for the passion. So there is prayer. Through prayer, God will guide you. Through prayer, God will give you inspirations. Through prayer, God will give you convictions to do this, to do that. So prayer is the another third way God guides us. The fourth way God guides us can be even through music. Through music also God can guide us and God can help us. Most of the music, devotional music, I'm talking about the devotional music, devotional songs. When you worship God singing together, these most of the songs, almost all the songs are all word of God and connected to the word of God, something connected to the Bible. So when you sing together, and when you worship God, God can speak to you through the songs. I remember sometime back in when I was in Tabor Retreat Center, just during the adoration time, the final adoration time, as I was going to the stage to lead the service, suddenly there was a strong inspiration to tell the choir members to sing one particular song. And that was during the adoration, uh, at the end of the adoration, just before the conclusion. So I went to the choir members and said, sing this song. And then that was Jumbo Jesus Loves You. That was the song. And then they started singing that action song, clapping the hands and uh, dancing in the presence of God. They started singing. And suddenly one girl who was sitting in the, at the back of the hall, she started screaming and crying and said, oh, Jesus, I love you, I love you. And then she started crying a lot. And everyone, those who were there around, went and consoled her. And then in between, when the song was going on, she came running to the stage and she said, Father, I want to speak to everyone something. I want to give a testimony. So I was wondering what exactly she is going to say because she was crying and, and praying. I mean, crying and she was going on saying something. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Then I asked her before I, I gave her mic, I asked her what exactly, tell me what happened. Then she said, she came here, she had lost all her hope in everything. She was thinking of committing suicide. And she came for the retreat as a last resort. She wanted God's intervention in that retreat. She wanted to know God cares for her, God loves her, and something she wants to experience from God, some God experience. And if she's, she had told God, if I don't have any God experience in during this retreat, 
I, the, and then if everything is same, I'm going to commit suicide after the retreat. So she had made up her mind and she attended the retreat. The four days of retreat, all these four days, there was nothing for her. She didn't feel anything for her and she didn't feel that God is taking care of her. She didn't feel any God experience. And now the last holy adoration, anointing of the Holy Spirit, even for that adoration, she didn't get anything. She didn't feel anything. And then she was, she has already made up her mind. This is the end. I'm going to commit suicide. And she was, was so disturbed and she was sitting the back, at the behind of the auditorium, re ready to leave the auditorium. And that is when suddenly this song started. Jumbo, Jesus loves you. And she could not believe this because Jumbo was her pet name. And suddenly that song started. She was listening to that song for the first time. And the moment that name song started, she started, could not believe this because publicly everybody, the whole crowd is jumping and dancing and declaring Jumbo Jesus loves you. And she was so shocked and shaken, she started screaming, crying loudly and said, Jesus, I love you. And that is what she wanted to give the testimony. My dear brothers and sisters, God can give you uh, messages and guidance even through the music and songs and worship. You just believe in it and glorify the Lord. God will speak to you. So that is the fourth step, the fourth way God guides you. God guides you through the uh, music. Second Chronicles chapter 20 was one onwards. We read like this. Second Chronicles chapter 20 was one onwards. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites and with them some of the Munites came against Jehoshaphat for battle. And a huge army came against Jehoshaphat, Israeli kingdom, to, uh, for a battle. Then verse 2. Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude is coming against you from Edom, from beyond the sea. Already they are at Haswan Tamar. So a great multitude has come against you. And verse 3. Jehoshaphat was afraid. He set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Jehoshaphat the king was afraid and he said, let there be a fasting and prayer. Let they, did, they did a fasting and prayer. And verse 20, we read like this, verse 20. They rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, O Judah, inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord, your God. You will be established. Believe in his prophets. He said, Jehoshaphat, the king said. And then verse 21, we read like this. When he had taken counsel with the people, he appointed those who were to sing to the Lord. He collected some people to sing. Music ministry. He appointed those who were to sing to the Lord and praise him in holy splendor as they went before the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love for endures forever. They were singing this psalm. Give thanks to the Lord for steadfast love endures forever. They were singing this psalm. The choir members were singing in front of the army. Then what happened? Verse 22. As they began to sing and praise the Lord, and praise the Lord set an ambush against the Ammonites, Moab and Mount Seir and who had come against Judah so that they were routed. They were all defeated just because of one singing and worshipping. My dear brothers and sisters, through the singing and worshipping and through the songs, God can speak to you and guide you. Praise the Lord. The fifth way God guides you is through silence. When you spend time in God, in front of God through silence, you can see God is guiding you and God is speaking to you. There is an incident mentioned in the Bible that is 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 11. 1 Kings chapter 19 verse 11. 11 we read verse 11. He said, go out and stand on the mountain. God said to Elijah, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass by. The Lord is going to pass through in front of them. Now there was a great wind. So strong that he was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Verse 12. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. After the fire, there was 
a sound of sheer silence sound of silence it's very interesting a sound of silence and then was the teen when elijah heard it he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave then there came a voice to him said what are you doing elijah in that silence he heard the voice of god in that sheer silence he heard the voice of god god speaks to you even through silence when you spend in the presence of god the sixth way god guides you is through the nature through this nature god speaks to you through wind storm lightning thunders maybe anim uh, the, the things of this world god is speaking to you god can speak to you when cain committed sin because of this sin the land will not produce fruit for you because of this jonah jonah was asked to go to um, tharshis and he went to tharshis he was asked to go to nineveh but he didn't go then when he went the, there was wind storm the waves beating into the boat the nature did not allow him to proceed because he is going against god so the nature was guiding him telling him don't do this so nature can speak to you romans chapter 1 verse 20 romans chapter 1 verse 20 we read like this ever since the creation of the world his eternal power and divine nature invisible though they are have been understood and seen through the things he has made so they are without excuse so all the message of god can be understood through the things which he has made god can speak through the things which he has made the animals creatures the birds and and winds and lightning thunder and sea and waves and everything can speak to us they are communicating with us because they are communicating with god too so the nature can guide us the situations that he, that we are in can guide us the situation can block uh, help us sometimes in the acts of the apostle we read the paul and silas and others when they want to travel they are blocked by the situations there certain situations when they go there is no opportunity or something happens and they are blocked so that is how so the seventh way god guides you is through dreams god can guide you through dreams we have so many examples in the bible one is old testament joseph the other one is new testament joseph old testament joseph was a dreamer god was speaking to him through dreams new testament joseph saying joseph was also a dreamer god was speaking to him and guiding him through dreams so if god gives you a dream god also will give you a interpretation some people they see some random uh, dreams and they are wandering and frightened and worried about the interpretation of it if god gives you a dream he will he also knows how to give you interpretation he will provide you interpretation if you don't get the interpretation anywhere that is just a dream not for you to concentrate on it praise the lord thank you jesus so my dear brothers and sisters these are the seven ways god guides you and me there may be many other ways god also guides us but these are the most prominent ways god guides us and guide have god has guided in the bible many ways many people so let's uh, be aware of all these facts and let's thank the lord let's close our eyes